I'm here and I want to get you set up with the RTL SDR V3. It is the fastest and easiest way to get started with your mission in SDR. Specifically, SDR with the RTL SDR V3 is very easy because the drivers are included with the software we're setting up today. That's going to be SDR++, which you can get from SDRPP.org. When you go to the website, there are two links. Be sure to download from the nightly build and not from the latest release. As it stands, the current release under latest release is older than the nightly build, of course, but the nightly build is as stable and has plenty more features. You want to click on that, download it, you'll have a zip file. This runs on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux variants as well as the Raspberry Pi. Once you download it to your machine, you'll unzip that folder and then go straight into the folder with the actual executable and run it. You can set up however you like, putting shortcuts on your own. When you first start the app, it'll first start up and it will not have your RTL SDR recognized. First thing is to start the app, then plug in your RTL SDR into the USB port. I've already plugged mine in and it has detected it. If yours comes up, when you're looking at this screen, this is the loading screen, the first screen, if yours comes up and this is blank, you'll wanna click on refresh. Make sure that it has been properly detected. The drivers are built into SDR++ for the RTL SDR V3. Next, let's look at a couple of things very quickly. After you've got it plugged in, you've got your USB cable and the SDR plugged in, as well as an antenna hopefully plugged into the SDR. The next thing that you'll want to do is recognize some of the things that are here. This main screen that you're looking at here is the default layout of the screen. If for some reason it comes up where your text is very small, there is a setting further down in the display settings that allows you to adjust the size of the text in the screen. This is the resolution. High DPI scaling. If it's set to 100 by default and your screen has very small type, then you can adjust this up into a higher size and then you'll be able to see your letters and data. This screen has all the settings on the left column. This column is controlled by this menu button here. Additionally, we have our frequency up here, and these steps are important. These are hundreds of megahertz. These are megahertz, and then of course this is sub megahertz when you're looking in the kilohertz range. So you pay attention to this. This section up here is in the gigahertz range. This is our waterfall area. You'll have what's called the FFT here. You'll be able to see the waveform. You can zoom in and out of whatever you're looking at with this bar. This changes the noise floor and how big the actual uh, waveform is displayed. And this setting right here changes the intensity of what's being recorded. By default, once we're set up here, we'll see FM radio. We're in the FM broadcast in the United States. That setting is here for wideband FM. I'm gonna turn the volume down here really quickly and start up my SDR. You should start seeing sampling data. You'll notice here we have our noise floor and you'll start seeing the waterfall st start filling in the screen here. I'll show you what happens when we adjust a few of the settings Lowering this down lowers the noise floor. That's that line that you see here. This is noise. And raising the setting raises the noise floor. Now, as it stands right now, we don't see anything um, for what we're tuning. And interestingly enough, that's due to a couple of things. One of which is one of the settings that I have made prior to setting this up. But for display purposes, we are okay. As we look around, we have the zoom feature here. This allows us to zoom into our waveform. You can zoom all the way into a specific 
frequency that you have set your tuner to. Let's make a couple of adjustments so that we can actually see a signal. I'm going to bring our noise floor back to where I want it and zoom all the way out. Bring this back up. Let's look over here, a couple of settings. This is the amount of bandwidth or amount of sample data that we're picking up. That is this width here. How many megahertz or hertz are we actually going to sample at one time? Different SDRs have the ability to tune higher bandwidths of signal or sample rather. So we'll click on that after we stop it here and we can see what the ratings are or the options are. The maximum for the RTL SDR V3 is 3.2 megahertz. So that would be 3.2 megahertz from here to here. That's the total amount. Um, under some circumstances, it actually may be useful when you're tuning specific frequencies to lower the amount of CPU that's being used. When you sample at a higher rate here, you're actually causing a lot more work to be done by your computer. So lowering this down will allow your computer to work more efficiently. And sometimes it can actually knock out some noise uh, depending on your setup if you're seeing a lot of noise or interference. So keep that in mind. Next we have some other settings uh, like direct sampling. This is how you can sample above. Uh, when this is disabled, this is how you sample and read signals with the RTL SDR V3 above 28.8 megahertz. And below that, you'll want to change this down to what's called the Q branch. We'll learn more about that later. The gain, this controls how much signal the SDR is tuning. We'll go ahead and start this back up. And right now, by default, we don't have the tuner automatic gain control, that's the AGC, enabled. As soon as I enable that, you'll notice that we start seeing signals come in. And the first signal is right here. We'll go ahead and tune that. Now, notice this little icon here. This is a bullseye, and it's also how the signal can be centered. If I go and click in the very middle of this signal here, it'll automatically center it. And it's now tuning there. Let's go ahead and increase this volume. And as you can see, now we're tuning FM radio. We'll tune another one. You'll notice I click there and it automatically centered. You always want to click in the very center to make your signal tune properly. And those are some quick basics of tuning your signal. If you're looking at wideband FM or tuning radio, that's the first thing that you want to do so that you can verify that your SDR is working properly. If you're running into any issues, post a comment below and I'll try to help you out and get you guys squared away. And also there's a few other things that are important as you're setting this up. There are a lot of things that you can change. When you first start off, try to make as few changes as possible. That way it will be working in its default mode. If you're running Linux or you have multiple sound cards and you're not getting any audio, down here in this section where it lists the syncs is where you can specify the audio device that you're using. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you stop it and make sure that it's not uh, running the SDR or quote playing and then you can come and change which radio, which is this, this is your tuning radio, you can choose a different audio device by selecting these drop downs. Currently I'm just using my Realtek audio device connected to my speakers and that is what we'll set it to. You can change the sample rate and some other things. Again, when you start off, limit the amount of changes that you're making and it will make things a lot easier for you. Change only when needed as you're learning. So tuning FM radio is where you want to start. We'll move on into some other areas and actually, I gotta go.